Hello, and welcome to Crazy Crow Craft Tips. Today I want to talk about some quick basics regarding working with leather. First, we'll address how to select leather for your particular project, then pre-stretching, and finally, laying out the pattern. Whether you're going to be making a project for Native American use or French and Indian War, Revolutionary War, it's very important to consider what kind of material to use for any particular project. Here at Crazy Crow, we encourage you to use materials as authentic as possible to what was originally used. In fact, the reenactor hobbies also stress authenticity in the things you make and wear. And even for contemporary items such as these moccasins, some leathers work better than others. We'd also like to point out that we use appropriate, authentic materials as much as possible in our Missouri River brand kits. For some of the entry-level kits, we sometimes substitute more economical materials. Let's talk about moccasins. Native Americans predominantly use buckskin for the uppers and Indian prepared rawhide for the soles. Today, buckskin is still the preferred leather. It's lightweight, yet strong enough to hold stitching for the rigorous workout which moccasins take during dancing and everyday wear. For soles, Indians historically used a special type of rawhide they prepared. It was firm, yet flexible, which was necessary for the sole to bend comfortably with each footstep taken. Today, however, that kind of rawhide is generally no longer available. Regular, untreated rawhide is exceedingly stiff and very difficult to sew. So instead of Indian prepared rawhide, Crazy Crow offers specially tanned Latigo sole leather. It's thick, flexible when worn, and tough enough to hold stitching for the extended life of the moccasin. Strap leather used for belts is a fairly good substitute, but the edges of these soles are not as strong as the Latigo, such that the stitching is more likely to tear out after a while. For garments, of course, buckskin is still the preferred material of choice. And historically, whether it was for Indian, the fur trade, or early American, the material that was used in those days was all brain tan buckskin. And that's what we have here. Now, this is very expensive, but it has wonderful properties, some of which, most of which are found in this German tan buckskin from Crazy Crow. This German tan is very easy to bead, it's easy to cut, it's easy to sew, and it makes a wonderful garment, uh, whether it's moccasins, leggings, or what have you. I should point out that if uh, color is a consideration for you, and you really want it to look historical, try to find a commercial leather that has a darker shade like this brain tan buckskin. As you can see, one side has one shade, the other side is a little bit lighter and some of the native tan buckskin actually got very, very dark, similar to this commercial buckskin in this pair of pants. On the frontier, the settlers also tanned and used what today would be called commercial leather, and this was predominantly cowhide and was ideal for utilitarian items such as this shooting bag. As you can see, the subject of what kind of leather to use for what kind of project can get a little bit involved. So what we're trying to do is encourage you to do some research, read first-hand accounts, read historical stories about what people actually used in the past, as well as use online resources. Again, what we're trying to do is recreate the past, not change it. Well, as you know, leather is an expensive material, but it's also a necessary material if we're going to recreate Native American styles, early American styles, or the fur trade. The problems come with garments that are worn, such as these pants, where if it's not properly prepared, the knees will stretch out and get baggy. The waist will get too big for you if it's not properly prepared, and even moccasins. If if they're not properly, if the leather's not properly prepared, you're going to get these things wallowed out. Next thing you know, they're way too big for you and very uncomfortable. So what we need to talk about now is how to prepare the leather before you ever make it into the garment. To avoid these problems with the garments that we just talked about, the leather needs some attention. And this has to be done before anything else is done, including even laying out your pattern to cut it. And we're talking about pre-stretching your leather. 
What we're going to do is stretch this leather by first soaking it in water and then stretching it until it dries. But there's one thing I want to point out. This works only for two kinds of leather. Commercial leather like this or brain tan smoked leather. Let me point out that brain tan smoked leather will do very well in this process and stay soft. However, if you have brain tan leather that has not been smoked, do not pre-soak it to pre-stretch it. The uh, result will be that when this dries, it'll dry stiff like rawhide. So I've now soaked this piece of hide until it's thoroughly saturated. And the next thing I want to do is wring it out as much as possible. Well, I've got my hide all wet, wrung out, and now I'm going to stretch it out. First thing you want to do is stretch it as well as you can by hand in every direction. And then we're going to nail it down. Now in this case, I have a small piece of hide, so I just have a small piece of board. But perhaps uh, you have a whole deer hide that you need to stretch. In that case, you might want to use uh, your fence or maybe part of your garage, whatever's big enough to get it stretched out thoroughly, but as long as the board or the fence are clean. So I'm going to start at one end and stretch it all the way as far as I can to the other. and continue stretching the hide in all directions until I have it thoroughly stretched out and I'll get all the wrinkles out of it as I stretch it. Well, my leather hide is now all dried out, so I'm going to remove it from the board. And even though it's dried, it still may not be as soft as it was before we actually soaked it and stretched it. But it's real easy to fix that. You just take your hide and you start rubbing it back and forth between your hands. And especially around the edges, just rub it back and forth a little bit and it'll soften back up, especially if it's a commercial hide or a smoked brain tan hide. Now, I should also note that even if you make a garment out of pre-stretched leather, it still may stretch just a little bit, like in the knees of your pants or leggings, but I can guarantee you that it will not stretch as much as if you do not pre-stretch your leather before you make your project. Well, now that our hide has been stretched, we want to go ahead and lay out a pattern on it, but there's some things I want to show you on this deer hide. We're going to consider what we'll call the longitudinal axis of this hide. For example, you may be able to tell that this is the neck area and this is the tail. This area in here is all the thickest area of a deer hide. And so if we're going to lay out a moccasin pattern or pattern for the upper, then we want the long axis of that pattern to be parallel with the long axis of the buckskin. So I'm going to lay this down here, and this would be the area that I would want to use to cut out my moccasin upper once I lay out the pattern. If you lay it like this, you're likely perhaps in the future to get some stretch this way that you didn't really want. But let's say that you have a piece of buckskin that you cannot tell where the head and the tail are. Maybe it's a small piece of buckskin. You just do the best you can. But one tip to keep in mind is that you should consider the thickness of the leather. On this moccasin, the toe and the heel are going to have the most stress. So you want them to be thick if you have a choice in the piece of leather that you get. Otherwise, if you have a thin piece of hide like you get on the flank of a deer down here, then if this heel were down here, 
when you actually lay it out, then you're going to have a thin, weak area in your hide when you make your moccasin. So just try to consider the thickness of the hide or piece of hide that you're using and, if possible, the longitudinal axis of the deer hide. Well, today we've covered some basics with regards to using leather. Different projects require different types of leather, and the best place to learn what's appropriate is to read any of the many available books on Indian culture, buckskinning, or early American culture. We then talked about the necessity of pre-stretching buckskin when it's to be used for moccasins or garments. And last, we talked about laying out the pattern to correspond to the long axis of a deer hide, if that's possible, given the piece of leather you're working with. Well, doing craft work is basically just a matter of making that first piece and taking advantage of all the online resources, the books, the craft kits and instructions that are available, and just rolling up your sleeves and making that first piece. The second piece you make, well, you can learn from uh, the experience of the first piece and make an even better second pair of moccasins or the, the other garment that you're going to make. So all you have to do is just do it. Well, thank you for joining us here at Crazy Crow, and we hope you've enjoyed Crazy Crow Craft Tips. Thank you.